Hello and welcome to video number four of this series, We're All In This Together. This is a collaboration between Seniors Action Quebec and the English Language Arts Network. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about social media. Let's get started. Today we're going to talk about the social media types, we're going to talk about staying safe on Facebook and Messenger, and we're going to cover the most common questions regarding Facebook. So what are some of the benefits to using social media? We can build and foster relationships, we can share experiences, connect with our communities, and get information. And regarding information, we're going to talk a little bit more about this specific topic in an upcoming video. So let's start with the social media types. And you're going to see it all in the table, but we're not going to talk about all of them. The first category is social networks. And here we have Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And these allow us to connect with other people. The second category is messaging apps such as WhatsApp, Messenger, and WeChat. And these allow us to message other people privately. The third category is photo and media sharing. And here, of course, we have Instagram, YouTube, and Vimeo. And this one allows us to share photos, videos, and more. We also have blogging and publishing networks, such as WordPress, Tumblr, and Medium. Interactive apps such as Snapchat and TikTok, discussion forums, Reddit and Quora, bookmarking and content curation such as Pinterest and Flipboard. We also have review networks such as Yelp and TripAdvisor, social shopping networks, interest based networks, sharing economy networks, audio only apps such as Clubhouse and Spotify, and even anonymous social networks. So what are the most popular social media platforms? The market leader is Facebook, which was the first social network to surpass the 1 billion registered subscribers. And it currently has 2.7 billion active users. And this makes it the most popular social media worldwide. Facebook being so popular and having so many registered users only means that we have to know how to handle our privacy and security in this platform. So we're going to see four important tips to stay safe on Facebook. The first tip is keep the information on your personal profile private or as private as you can. And this personal information includes our birthday, our phone number and our address. The second way to stay safe on Facebook is to not accept friendship requests from people we don't know. The third way, and this is very important, is not to answer any random questions or take any quizzes such as personality quizzes on Facebook. I know these are very tempting to take, but behind that quiz, we are giving away a lot of our information. So it's better to not even click on them. And what are these questions that I'm talking about? Lately on Facebook, I've been seeing a lot of posts asking things such as, do you remember the name of your first pet? Or what was the name of your mother before she got married? What was the name of your third grade teacher? If we stop and think about it for a minute, these are the same type of questions that our bank or similar services use to verify our identity. So basically, we are putting on Facebook the answers to these very private questions that we should only use for our bank. And even if you see that one of your friends answered, just ignore the question. And if you can, call your friend and tell them it's not a great idea to answer these questions on social media and also tell them why. And another way that we can stay safe on Facebook or any other platforms is to use multi-factor authentication. What does that mean? Well, multi-factor authentication means 
that whenever you sign into your account in one device, it's gonna send you a code to a second device. For example, it may send you a text to your cell phone if that is what you configure. So besides your password, you will also need that code. And a fifth and bonus tip, this is for all your accounts, is to have strong passwords. And if you are not sure what a strong password looks like, be sure to watch video number three when we talk about communications and we also talk about what is a strong password. And it goes without saying that your passwords should be different in all your accounts. I know this is a little bit of a pain, but believe me, it's really worth it. So we're not worried that if one of our accounts got hacked, at least the other ones are protected. So if your passwords are the same over different accounts, take some time today and go change those passwords. So now let's go to Facebook and see how we can secure our profile. I'm gonna click on Facebook because I already have an account I can simply sign in, but if you don't have an account, you can sign up using the option at the bottom in the middle where it says sign up for a Facebook account. And now let's go to our profile. So on the top right, you can see first a speech bubble. That is the messenger app. Then next to it is my profile picture then my name and then an arrow pointing down. So we're gonna click on the arrow here. And now we have this menu, which is our activity log, settings, privacy shortcuts or logout. So I'm gonna go directly to settings. And first of all, let's go check our personal and account information. So I'm gonna tap on that. And here I see my name, contact info, and account ownership and control. I'm gonna click on my contact info, and this is where my phone number is. And if you see just below my phone number, there is a little lock and it says only me. This means that it's only me that can see this information. So it doesn't matter if it's on Facebook, Nobody else but me can see it. And it's the same for this email address. If you see that your phone number is public or other people can see it, how can we change it? So we're gonna tap on the arrow that is to the right. This one right here, we're gonna tap on it. And now it says, this is my phone number is confirmed. When it says it's confirmed, it means they send me a code to my cell phone and I enter that code on Facebook. So that's why it is confirmed. If I tap on the little arrow to the right, this is where I have the options to change it. So of course I can change it, for example, to public, which I wouldn't want to do that. So I'm gonna change it back now to friends. So I just have to press where it says see all and then the other options appears. So I'm gonna set it back to only me and then it goes back automatically to this screen. It means this option is already saved. If this is not your case, go ahead and change it as soon as you can. I press the arrow to go back for the email address it's the same thing, it's only me who can see it. And now let's scroll down and go to this section that is called audience and visibility. And this is where we can make sure that the rest of our profile information is private, so it's visible to us only or maybe to our friends or close friends, if that is what you choose to. So I'm gonna click where it says profile information. If you created this account a while ago, maybe you have already added your work experience, college, high school. I have not added any of that information. 
one thing that I added is the places where I lived but again the visibility is only me so even if it's there other people cannot see it if the visibility for you is for example set to public I will recommend you to change it to at least friends only and how do we change it if you see at the end of that line to the right there is a little pencil so we simply tap on the pencil and this is where you can either delete your current city or just tap where it says only me in the box that it says only me and then it gives you this option so public and this means anybody on or off Facebook I will recommend you to not have it public the other possibilities is to have it as friends only me well only you in that case or we can always say see more when we do see more we see all the options so you can make this information available to acquaintances which I don't know why we will do that or only close friends but definitely the most secure of all is if this information is visible to only yourself but I'm gonna change it back to only me once it's changed back it's very important to hit the blue bar at the bottom that is save and now I'm here again on the places I live if you have added your work experience college high school other information you can do the same other contact info is my phone number and my email on basic info I have my gender and my birthday and this is another place where I recommend that you go and edit this information if you see at the end of the line of basic info just to the right we have the word edit so I'm gonna click on it and if you have your real birthday here which I don't <laughs> I will recommend you to change it if you want or at least to put this information as private meaning only you have access to this information and the birthday is divided in two parts so you can decide to show only your birth date which will be the month and the day if you choose to although I have it as only me on both cases but what you can do is to tap on the little lock that is to the right and here is where this menu appears again and I have public friends or more options so if you click on more options it, show, it shows you acquaintances and close friends if it's public I will at least suggest to go to friends so at least only your friends can see your your birth date and not everybody on and off Facebook but it's ultimately up to you I'm gonna leave it as only me so once I tap again only me this menu disappear then my birth year it's also to only me so at the end I'm just gonna go and click on save and this is where you come and make sure that your information is at the privacy level that you decide to so let's take a tour on our Facebook we have the menu on the bottom the first icon that is right now in blue is called the news feed is everything that is on my Facebook feed the second icon is the list of my friends and this is where you can see new friend requests arriving and I haven't confirmed these friend requests yet because I don't actually know these people if you receive friend requests from people you don't know you can simply delete them before deleting this friend request Facebook tells you if you have friends in common with this person so with the first person I have five mutual friends so what I can do if I don't want to delete this friend request right away is to ask some of my friends if I click on the first person it's gonna show me a list of 
the, the friends we have in common. So I can ask one of these friends if they actually know this person and if this is really who they seem to be. So at this point, I think I'm just gonna delete this friend request and then it's gonna show me a list of people that it thinks I might know because we have friends in common. If you send a friend request by mistake, you can always cancel. You can also see your list of friends if you click at the top where it says your friends and this is the list to the right of each friend there is three dots so you can click on the three dots and then this menu appears i can message this friend privately i can unfollow this friend what does unfollowing means it means if i want to see less post from this person i can simply unfollow but we will still be friends on facebook i can block this person if I don't want this person to be able to contact me ever again. Of course, I don't want to do this with this friend or I can unfriend this person. So that is what you can do with the list of your friends. So we're under settings and privacy and now we're gonna go verify that we have the multi-factor authentication enabled. For that, we're going to go to the first section, account, and the second option, passwords and security. Once you click in there, you're going to come to this section, password and security. If we scroll a little bit up, we can see the two-factor authentication. And now I can click on the arrow at the end of the line to the right because this is a security setting is asking me to enter my password so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and continue and here is telling me that two-factor authentication is on and my security method is my cell phone number so they're gonna send me a text message with a code whenever facebook sees an attempt to log in from a device it doesn't recognize so I'm just gonna go back to the previous screen. And here it shows me where I'm logged in right now. So I'm logged in with this iPad and also on my Samsung phone. So if you think anybody is logged in into your account, you can just come here to the arrow that is beside your name, the arrow pointing down, settings, and then password and security and then here where you're logged in this is all the places where i'm currently logged in and because i recognize all of those devices i'm okay with that this is also the place where you can change your password so if you think your account got hacked or if you simply want to change your password because you have had the same password for a long time and a long time I mean anything after six months or a year that that will be a long time you can come here and change your password also if you think your password is very weak and of course to change your password you have to provide your current password and you have to provide your new password twice. And if you happen to have forgotten your password, you can click here on forgot password and they're gonna send you an email with a recovery link to the email address that you provided. I'm not gonna do that right now because I haven't forgotten my password. If you think your account got hacked, Facebook actually has a place where you can report that. So at the bottom or at the end of this list, there is an option that says, if you think your account was hacked, if you notice unusual activity on your account, tell us what's happening so we can help you. So I'm gonna click on that. And then these are the questions that they're asking us. So if you find that any of these things are happening in your account, Come here and click on the circle to the right of this option, whichever option, whichever symptom is happening in your account, 
and then click continue. I'm not gonna report my account right now because it hasn't been hacked, but it is good to know where you can report if your account got hacked. Of course, I encourage you to come here and learn more about security, about your preference, about audience and visibility, who can see your post, who can tag you. So make sure to check all these options at your own time. So let's continue with Facebook and some of the most common questions I hear. The first question is, what is the difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook group? And those two categories are completely different than our personal Facebook profiles. So let's see what are the main differences or characteristics. Facebook pages are the business type of Facebook profile for companies, organizations, and public figures. Their purpose is to connect with their audience or community. Whether Facebook groups are intended to be a community center on, com on a common interest. Their purpose is to offer a way for people to interact with each other. So those are the two main differences or main characteristics regarding pages and groups. What can we do with a page? To be able to see notifications from a page, we have to like and follow the page. For example, I like or follow pages from local businesses around my area. This way I can find information about the business organizations. I can also find the links to their website, their opening hours, contact information, etc. And I find this really useful. With a page, we can also direct message them privately and we can comment on their post. And that brings us to groups and why groups are created. As we said earlier, the main purpose of a group is to create this community sense. First of all, we have to say that there are three different types of groups. There are open groups, closed groups, and there are also secret groups. For most groups, you have to agree to a set of general rules or answer up to three questions to be able to join. Once you're in the group, you can interact by making your own post or you can comment on other people's posts. While I have no experience with secret Facebook groups, I can tell you that one of the most common questions in closed groups is why I cannot share this post or can you activate the share option? And unfortunately, there is no way an admin or the person that did the post can activate the share option in a closed Facebook group. So if you're inside a closed group, you won't see the share option because the posts are not supposed to be shared outside of that group. In an open group, you are able to see or you will find the share option as well as in Facebook pages. Let's open Facebook. And let's search for the page for Seniors Action Quebec. Or let's say if Seniors Action Quebec has a page. So I'm simply gonna click on it, the first one. And then I'm gonna click again. And here it says, this is a community. We can see here the home, we can see the about. And as you see here, I already like this page and I'm also following it. So we can go to about. It tells us their mission, their info. So if you want to send an email, there is a link to their website here, the phone number, etc. You can also see photos that they posted, videos, go back to home where we can see their posts. And this is how we can stay informed of what is happening with this organization in particular. Another important tab for every Facebook page is the events tab. If you see here right after videos, and this will tell us about upcoming events and also past events. So right now in this page, 
there are no upcoming events but we can see here some of the past events let's search now for another page let's search for the english language arts network so i'm just gonna search elan and it's the first one here elan quebec so i'm gonna click remember you can also private message this page just by clicking on this button this is gonna open actually the messenger app and now we can send a message directly to them in case we have a particular question so i'm gonna get out of here and going back to facebook and let's go to events here. so ellen quebec has some upcoming events there are a few events here that I was interested, for example, this event on Thursday, May 26 at 5 p.m. And this is an online event and all the information about the event is right here. So there is 151 people interested. This is an event by Ellen Quebec and article It's an online event and it's a public event to anyone on or off Facebook. So if you have a friend that you think might be interested on this event after you read the description, you can simply share this information with them. If they're on Facebook, you can simply send them this by messenger. But if they're not on Facebook, you can copy this event and send them an email. So let's copy this event. I'm gonna press on the three dots after interested right here. This gives me the option to share, add to calendar, save or copy link. So if you're going to send this event by email, you can copy the link and then paste that link onto an email. But if we simply want to share this event on our own Facebook profile or on Messenger, we can simply click on share. And then here it tells us if we want to invite somebody else. So if I want to share this event with some friends in particular, or if I want to send it by messenger, if, if I want to share it to my story or to my feed. So I'm gonna send it, actually I'm gonna share it on my feed. So I'm gonna share it on my Facebook. And right now it's only to me. So I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna open it to um, friends and I'm gonna say done and now you can say something about it so if you want to write something about this event you can do that there I'm not gonna write anything about it I'm just gonna post on my profile and this is how we share an event if you're interested in an event you can simply press on interested or going and to check the events that i am interested or registered for i simply go here down to the menu and if you see here in the menu the first option is events and here is the event that we were looking at so that was the Facebook page and how we can look for events in the Facebook page. So now I'm back on my feed and I'm going to search for groups on photography. So I have different options. So I'm going to search just photography groups near me. I'm going to go and check this group. NDG Artists and Events Montreal. It says that it's a public community. It has 930 members. If you see here, I have the tab to join, but before I click join, I'm simply gonna click on the group itself. So right here at the top, this is the about. It's public, it's visible to anyone. And this community was created back in August 2011. So it seems like a good group. I am going to click join. So I'm going to join the community. I instantly got accepted. And there was no questions. Now there is 931 members. 
and my picture is right there at the beginning. If I have other friends that I think might be interested in this group, I can simply hit invite and then I can invite some of my friends to join this group. So I'm gonna invite this friend and of course it's up to them to accept or not the invitation. And that is our tour around Facebook. If you still have any questions regarding Facebook, don't hesitate to leave us a comment below. And now let's go on to Messenger. We can easily go to Messenger from Facebook. If you see here right before our profile picture, there is a little bubble and I'm gonna click there. And this brings me to Messenger. These are friends. To start chatting with them, I simply need to tap and then start chatting. So if you want to have a private conversation, make sure you are on Messenger and messaging only that friend. And here on Messenger, you can also create a group of friends. For example, here I have two pictures on the side and it means in this group there are two friends plus myself. So if I want to send a message to both of these friends, I can simply do that. And you can also write new messages using this paper and pen right here. So let's click there and here you can create a new group or you can select somebody from your list of friends. So let's say I'm looking for one of my friends. I can just start typing the beginning of their name. This is my friend. And now I'm gonna send him a second message. That's it. And this is another way that if you don't see your friend's name here, you can simply tap on the paper and pen and start writing their name. From Messenger, you can also start a call, an audio call here or a video call. Just the way we did on video number three with Skype and FaceTime. So it's the same in Messenger. You just press on the, on the little phone or on the video and that is gonna start a video call or an audio call with the friend that you have selected. You can also use your camera to send pictures or you can send pictures that you already have on your device. One option that I find very useful is this little microphone. So if I touch on the microphone, I can leave them a voice message. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna just click on this microphone over here and when I click it's telling me that messenger wants to access my microphone because I want to send a voice message I'm gonna say okay and then I'm gonna click on it hi how are you doing just thought to leave you a voicemail today hope you're doing great bye and if by any reason you sent a message and then you want to unsend it, you can simply press and hold. And then here you're going to have a few options. I can forward this same message to another friend or click unsend. And then it's going to ask you if you want to unsend for everyone or just unsend for you. I'm going to say unsend for everyone. Okay, and now I'm going to try to send a new message. Hello, just uh, doing today. Bye. And you can also listen to your own message if you press on the play symbol right here. So then you can decide to keep it or to remove it again. It's important to talk about security here on Messenger. And there are two very simple ways to stay safe. And the first one is do not click on any links that anybody sends you. And when I say anybody is anybody, even if it's a friend that you know, before you click on the link, if you can contact this friend through another means. So if you have their phone number, 
give them a call or send them an email and ask them if it was really them who sent you a link. Because sometimes our friends' accounts get hacked and the hackers take advantage that we know and trust our friends and we click on those links is when our accounts could potentially get hacked as well. So clicking on no links whatsoever without be previously verifying with your friends. The second way to stay safe on Messenger is be aware of the common scams. And one of the most common scams that I have seen lately, it's a message that is also coming from one of your friends. And it's not that they are trying to scam you. It's just that probably their accounts got hacked. So the message is coming from their account and it's saying something like, is it you on this video or I think I think I saw you on this video and then once again there is a link if you see something like that just stay away or don't click on the link it doesn't matter how curious you are it's not you on the video and it's gonna take you to another site where probably they're gonna ask you to sign in or to give give some kind of login information or simply it's gonna bring you to download malware or virus into your device. So just stay away from any links that says, oh, I think it's you on this video, or I think I saw you on this video. Something like that is a known scam. Don't click on the links. And when in doubt, there are a few things that we can do. One, we can go to Google. So let's do that right away. So let's open Safari and go to Google and search that phrase. I think it's you on this video. So you should type exactly the way it, it comes in the message. I think you appear on this video and as you see here, this is a phishing scam. hijacks Facebook accounts. So there are a lot of instances of, is it you in this video? Don't fall for this messenger scam. If you don't find that on Google, then just contact your friend and ask them if it's really them that send you that message. But don't contact your friend on Messenger. Send them an email or if you can give them a call, it's even better. Don't be afraid to just ask your friends directly. It's going to save you and also them a lot of trouble because the sooner they know their, uh, their account has been hacked, the sooner they can take steps to get out of that situation. So those are the two tips to stay safe on Messenger. So as you saw before, we went directly to Messenger through Facebook. But even if you don't have Facebook, you can get the Messenger app, which is this one right here. So we're going to click on it and open it. And it's going to take us exactly where we were before. You can access Messenger directly through its app or you can access Messenger through Facebook and then the little circle or the little bubble, the speech bubble just beside your picture. So those are two ways that will bring you to the same place. That was video number four on social media. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you still have any questions or comments, or if you wanna let us know what new social media platform you try or you're willing to try, please leave us a comment. I would love to read those. I also want to remind you about our upcoming video on internet safety. So until next time.